who's going to win the pick for number one. Today I'm going to be opening up a project that I created for the NBA Draft Lottery. This is a unique project because we didn't know any of the results until things happened live on TV. So I needed to set this up in a way that was going to be easy to execute and turn around quickly right after the draft lottery was announced and reorder the team names to fit that order. So I built this with expressions so that all I had to do was load all of my teams into an essential graphics panel. And on the night of the draft lottery, all I had to do was update those numbers and everything would work accordingly. There's conditionals that I needed to solve for based on where teams fell and who got those picks if the team had traded them based on a certain protection. So that was the fun part of this project. So let's jump in and I'll show you how I tackle this. Let's talk about initial layout and where I actually initially started, which is with the white background here. So I have a new comp and I'm just gonna go up here to my shape layer and I have it as a white fill. I'm gonna double click on it. It's gonna fill the screen, but that's gonna allow us to adjust the size right from the middle. So I ended up going with 675 by 100 for all the different layers for the teams. And the way I figured that out is by doing this, but then also adding a repeater. And I ultimately didn't use a repeater because it was going to be much harder to wield and adjust as opposed to keeping them all separate. So what I need is 14 layers, and you can see it's going off to the right here. So I need to change my position instead of the X, I need this to be the Y. So if I type 100, you can see we have everything laid out here. And I felt like this was about right for the distance that I was looking for with the logo up here and all the teams down below. The issue here is that my size is in the Y is 100. So I wanted to give each team a little bit of space. So I actually made my repeater 105. And that's what gave me the break within each team layout here. And the huge upside of doing it this way, laying it out, although I wasn't using a repeater, is now I know all the math. I know exactly how far something is from the other asset, and I know how big the asset is. And, and using big round numbers like this made my life a lot easier when I was trying to portion it all out. So once I had this, I also needed the team asset. So let me jump in here and show you how I created this. So if I hit command or control K, you can see that I created this asset with a height of 100 because we created that other asset. We created the background with a height of 100, knowing that I wasn't going to cover the full height of this asset. All right. And setting my width to 550. So this allowed me to go in and drop all the team logos. So here's an example, Oklahoma City Thunder. So I have all the logos. They're all going to be the exact same space, as close to the same size as possible with all, obviously the varying degrees of the different looks and angles of, of all the logos. And then this is just a text that I can update, but I changed it so that my paragraph here is left aligned. So when I change it to something like the port and trail blazers everything is consistent on the left side so something much shorter chicago bulls is still going to be consistent with the logo up up the side and then the start of the name in the same place and i obviously started with oklahoma city thunder because they had of all the teams in the lottery they had the longest name so i wanted to make sure that their name would fit and everything else was built off of that. Let me go back to our final animation here. 
So once I had all of that laid out, I also had to make a decision on the numbers. So the repeater that I showed you is actually what I'm using here for all these numbers because I didn't want the numbers and the backgrounds to change with the team names. I thought the the way that names changed around was going to be enough change that it would be distracting if everything came with it and the number changed too. But technically, if you wanted to do that, you can. So I have some conditionals here. And you can see down here we have outlined what these conditionals mean. So one, which is this layer right here, the Dallas Mavericks, if this pick falls below 10, if it's 11 through 14, then it's conveyed to New York. Well, I don't have New York up here yet, but we will make that adjustment. And same with the Chicago Bulls. The pick will be conveyed to Orlando if the Bulls pick is not in the top four. So five through 14, this will become Orlando's pick. So if I scrub here, you can see that that changes to Orlando because it stayed at 11. And that's because nothing changed. And at the end of the day, because of how quickly I wanted to be able to update this, I built it so that, let me pull up my central graphics panel. I built it so that all I have to do is change the number by the team name and have it automatically do whatever I want it to do. So these conditionals in here can automatically be changed. So let me go down here to my teams and these are pre-comped. Let me select all of these. If Dallas Mavericks pick falls to 14, then it's going to be conveyed to the New York Knicks. However, if it stays in the top 10, anywhere in the top 10, change it to 6, change it to 10, it's going to stay as the Mavericks. With the Bulls, if I change this to be top 4 pick, then they would get to keep it. But if I go 4, if I go Five, you can see it changes to the map. So that's logic that I put in here to automatically drive the layout. So I didn't have to remember who needed to be where. And it just made the change much easier because I was only adjusting where the teams fell in order. And if I scrub back here, you can see that this name changes. as I scrub. So let me go into one of these. I'm just going to show you one of them. Let's go with the Dallas Mavericks. And you can see since our number is set to 10, that doesn't do anything. But if I change this to 12, it will change. Dallas, is dead. but it needs to start with Dallas. Then it'll go to the next. And it's based on this slider here. So I'm using a linear expression based on this number up here. So if I hit EE -E for Y position, so I decided I didn't want this to be a straight change out. So I'm not dealing with opacity. I wanted to deal with Y position so that it wipes away and it feels a little bit more cohesive with how things are moving with the rest of the asset. So I'm driving this with these two keyframes up here. And let me walk through this real quick. So I have my Mavs position, which is connected to this number in the central graphics panel. I, I have it tied to a controller in the draft lottery vertical. You can see that here, draft lottery vertical comp. And I have a controller inside that comp that has, that's called Dallas Mavericks. So it's driven by this number, which I ended up putting in this central graphics panel up here. So let's go back in here. And my driver is this controller, this slider, right here that's in the same comp. So as this slider goes from 0 to 100, I want to 
have this if I turn this off. So I'm at 50, which is right in the middle of this comp. And in order for this to go off and the Knicks to come on, I need to go negative. And the height of this comp is 100. Remember, we laid out all that math early on. So the height of this is 100. So I need this to go minus 100, which is negative 50. So it disappears from within this comp. But I, I only want that to happen if the Mavs position, if this number up here is greater than 10. So I'm saying if the Mavs position is less than 11, I don't want this to move. So I'm telling it to, to pick the 50. So this goes from 50 to 50. Let me change this to 10. So it goes from 50 and doesn't move because it's looking at this conditional right here. And if I space this out, you can read it easier. So if the map's position is 10 or less, I don't want this to move at all. So basically ignore the keyframes. But if the position ends up being greater than 10, if this position here is anything greater than 10, I want it to follow these keyframes as it goes from 0 to 100. I want it to go from 50 to negative 50, basically subtract 100 so that it wipes off the screen. So I'm using the linear expression there, and I did the same with the, with the magic and bulls. The only difference here is that the bulls pick had to be in the top four in order to stay the bulls, and the Orlando magic could fall anywhere from 5 to 14. But the expression is pretty much identical. All right, so let me go back here and turn off those solos. So that's how we changed those numbers. And let me make sure that Dallas Mavericks is actually set to 10. There go. So what about the positions? So I actually created these boxes and I parented them to the team assets that we had created, the, the logo and name. So if I hit P, I am driving this asset with one set of keyframes. If I go to the second team here, the Houston Rockets, and I hit EE, -E, everything is tied back to this one place. So I only have to create these keyframes once, and then I'm just pointing each subsequent team to these keyframes and offsetting it by the value at time expression with my offset. So if I go back up here, let me just turn on my controller here and lock this so you can see. So my time offset is set to 0 0.05. So that's what I defined here. It said my offset, I want it to be 0 0.05. And then for my X position, I pick whipped up to, let me start a new layer here. So I pick whipped up to this X position. And when I get that, it tells me it's looking at the Detroit Pistons.png, which is this layer that I want. And I'm looking at the transform X position, which has all the, which has these keyframes on it. And then all I did was add this dot value at time time minus offset, which is what I, the offset is what I predefined here, which is the 0 0.05. So the thing about this is if I left this as Detroit Pistons.png, I would have to go into each one and pick whip, but there's a better way. So you can see that I have index minus two. So because I have each box, each white background, behind the team asset, the team logo and name, I know that in order for this asset to look at the previous team and adjust based on the exposition, there's always going to be a difference of two. So from 29 to 27, 
is a difference of two. So instead of leaving this as Detroit Pistons.png, I change this to say index, look at my number and subtract two. So I'm looking at the comp two layers above, and I'm taking that position and offsetting it by the value at time of time minus my 0.05. So then what that allowed me to do is right click here and copy expression. And on each one of these, I just had to paste that expression. And I didn't have to go in and make any adjustments. But if I wanted to make an adjustment, I could just make that adjustment all self-contained within this one asset here. And that sped up my process here. So that when this animates, if I wanted to tweak it, if it wasn't right, I could do that. I could also change my time offset. So everything is tied together in as few properties as possible to adjust. So I'm going to undo that. All right, so what about the Y position then? So if I hit P, I have an expression here on the Y position. It's going to look almost identical to the same one that you saw within this Mavericks Knicks pick because I'm using a linear expression driven by this slider up here. So I like to call this outsourcing my keyframes. I am using a single set of keyframes to drive the adjustment. And you can see nothing's moving right now because everything's in order. All I have to do is just, I know this is not the, the real thing. I'm just moving a whole bunch of different uh, numbers here so you can see. Let's just make this 12. Let's leave that 11. Just so everything everything moves. And let's make this 13. All right. So. Everything starts here, and then when I'm dragging, these keyframes are driving all of these layers to move to a different spot based on the numbers outlined here. So the Spurs ended up in one, Hornets in two, Blazers in three. But that's not where they started. But everything is just being driven by this single slider. And the Y position here. So. We have our Y start, which is the value. We want it to start at a certain Y position. So if I turn this off, that's 284.5. That's where this ended up starting based on the layout of making sure all 14 fit. So when I did all this, I have my starting point. And if you do the math here with this layer, 389 minus 284 is 105. So going back to our repeater layout, we had set this to 105 so that there was a little bit of spacing in between. So it makes my life easier knowing that. And that's included in my expression here. So if my Y start value of 284 and then my Y end, where is this going to end up? So it's going to end up at 284 minus 105. So I had to pull out my calculator, make sure that I did this right. So I did 284 minus 105, which gave me 179. So that's this number here. So that's where that's going to start. And the reason I started at 179 is because I knew that I was also going to add at least 105. So if the Detroit Pistons landed at one, let me just change this to say, if the Detroit Pistons landed at one, I included this expression here where I'm multiplying 105, the distance between each one of these assets times the number that they land on up here. So if I was multiplying this by one, if they landed in the number one spot, I would be adding 179 plus 105. Because 105 times 1 is obviously 105. So 
I need to make sure that my numbers all matched up here. So that's why I had to subtract 105 to get to 179 initially. But the benefit of doing this is that I can take this number, I can multiply 105 times wherever they are in here, and then add that to my baseline. So since they ended up, since the pistons ended up at 5, 105 times 5 is 525. So I'm adding 525 plus 179, which gets me to 704. And they're in the fifth spot now. So the Y position is at 704. But again, if I scrub this, I'm at 284. So now I'm, I need to set up my linear expression. Oops, I missed the semicolon there, I guess. My linear expression says, look at the, look at a certain slider, which is this one up here. Look at the slider, and as it goes from 0 to 100, as it goes from 0 to 100, I want it to go from my starting value to the ending value, which is the baseline number plus 105 times their ending spot. And that is how I drove where these layers each ended up based on just the single number. Then this was another situation where I right click, copied expression, and went down to my Y. And the only thing I had to touch was to change effect. Here. And if I was smarter about this, I I could have changed this so that this automa automatically updated too, because three is calling out the effect order. So effect order three of my controller. So I'm one, two, three. So the rockets were three. And that means that San Antonio was four. If I click in here, so effect, effect order four. And that's only because I had slider control up top. And I could have changed, I could have automated that, and that's definitely something that I can improve for the next time. But generally speaking, that's how I tied all of this together. I have my team boxes in order, and each tied to the team layer, so that when the teams changed, there was a white box under them to help keep them separate. And then with these lottery odds and percentages, these didn't need to change. We just needed to see them up front so we could see who who ended up winning and what their odds were initially. So I just used these as mats and animated them. So as the team box came back in, the text animates out. So here are my percent percentages. So if I hit P, they come in, and if I toggle my switches here, I'm matted to each different team. So I know percent one is team one, and so on. So I'm matting to the specific team box. Layer 28 is my percent one. So alpha mat here when it's when there's a background there. Show it. Otherwise off. Have it the right disappear. I hope that was helpful if you are looking to do something like this. Simplifying and keeping your numbers as whole as you can and as simple as you can is really the driving force behind making all of this work appropriately.